Hey guys, welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Cooking Customers. It's by Dave Schneider and uh, Good Enough Games. Plays two to five players, 14 and up, and takes about 20 to 40 minutes. In the game Cooking Customers, you're basically going to be cooking for customers. You'll be having your own chef. You'll be using die to roll to gather meal cards to place on your table. After acquiring enough meals on a table, you'll flip that card over and gain a tip. And your objective is to get 20 points. If you can do that before anybody else, you win the game. But remember, players can only play one card on themselves per turn and one card on another player. And that can sometimes trip you up. Sometimes it's going to remove your cook or make you roll certain die that you don't want to roll or uh, force you to re-roll die that you'd rather not. Of course, the die themselves have blanks, they have meals, and then of course fired, and if you get all four or three or two dice, depending on how many you're rolling, uh, on the fired side you're going to lose your chef and not get any meals. As long as you don't roll that you'll be okay, but it'll determine how many meals you get to place on your table. After you've done that by playing two cards, you always have uh, five cards in your hand, you're going to pass your turn to the next player and they'll get their opportunity to try and gather as many meals as possible. Eventually somebody will get the points and win the game cooking customers. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at what's on the table. So here we have the game Cooking Customers and everything included, and as you can see, there is quite a few little things here. You're gonna have your meal tokens that you place on your table cards. You're going to have your cooking customer deck, which is what you're gonna be utilizing to gather uh, chefs and other interesting, unique, uh, special events that you can they take place, whether it be on yourself or on your opponents. And then you're gonna have die, which will be rolling together meals, your rule book, and your box over here as well. In the game, every single player is going to get five of these cards here, and they're going to be utilizing them in some unique way. Sometimes they're going to want to put cooks in front of themselves or in front of their opponents to either help them or to hurt their opponents. And then after that, they're going to uh, play uh, any other cards they want. They get two base cards they can play in the game, whether it be one on you, one on your opponent, or you can simply discard one or two cards and draw two new ones, which maybe if you don't have the hand you want, you can utilize that aspect as well. Then you're going to roll dice based on the cook and any special cards you have in front of you, and you're going to gather meals. If it says three meals, you're going to take three meal, three meal tokens and place them on your table, and uh, so on and so forth, trying to gather as many tips as possible, which is that green card, the opposite side of your table, gather that 20 will win you the game and for the most part that's what you're getting in the game cooking customers let's go ahead and show you a round or so and then i'll tell you what i think about the game so here we have cooking customers and everything included for two players set up already as you can see everybody's got their five cards they're starting with a table card this player's got a seven this player's got a five we've got the die here in the middle of the table so people can utilize them the meal tokens will be over here set aside along with the two decks that are going to be shuffled as well after you've dealt out everybody five cards then the first player will begin you go ahead and select that person based on, I guess, who is the last person to cook a meal. And look at the cards in your hand. This player here has a super cook, so he's going to play that on himself. That's one of his two actions. And then his final one is he can go ahead and play a card on his opponent or one of his opponents. Uh, this one here says roll two extra die after your next cooking roll. That's pretty useful. You all play that on them. Subtract one from your next roll. Uh, you have uh, supplies you can play on yourself. And then uh, roll two extra die after your next cooking roll. So we'll go ahead and play this on our opponent deliverable. That means that they're going to have to subtract one die from your next roll. Pretty useful. Then after that, they're going to uh, simply get a chance to roll. And how they do that is they're going to look at their cook, see how many die they get to roll, take these die and roll them. They roll them and then they're going to uh, add the amount of meal tokens they rolled onto their meal card. This one needs seven meals, so that's two right there. And uh, these are blanks. They'll give you nothing. Fireds will also give you nothing, but if you actually rolled all fired, like like this, you're going to lose your chef. He'll be discarded, and that could be a really de detrimental thing for you. Nevertheless, he didn't do that, so that's good. Uh, it will now move on to the next player, and before that happens, this player is going to draw up to his maximum hand size. Then the next player is going to get a chance to go, look for a cook. You want to have those cooks to start with. That's a basic cook that'll let you roll for three. And then you've got to uh, take any cook or helper card from another player. That's pretty useful. Maybe I'd want to take that. Or a player has to discard their cook, but may place two two meals on their card. So I'll play this card of my opponent that will get discarded. So it forces the player to discard their cook, but they get to place two meal tokens on their table. And then after he's played his cards, he simply will take his die. He's gonna get three die, moving one to the side. Uh, however, undeliverable, minus one die to my next roll. So I lose another die. Now I get two, I roll them, I got a meal and I'll place it on my table. 
not too bad. Draw back up to uh, five cards here, and the next player is going to get a turn. He's going to go ahead and look at his hand. He doesn't have a cook now. That's no good. However, this player happens to now be drunk, and so he's going to subtract two from his next die roll. And uh, we've got uh, a customer that can hurt another player. We've got some gloves. Uh, we'll go ahead and discard a card. Let's go ahead and get rid of one of these guys here, I think. And draw a card in hopes of getting a cook. Well, that didn't happen, so we'll draw an extra card here. And then the next player is going to get a chance to go looking at his hand. Uh, maybe he wants to play roller skates on himself, which doubles the amount of meals on the next roll. And then maybe he'll play a customer on the opponent. Customers are usually bad. Player must discard the current table and all kitchen supplies. But here's how to stop the card. Roll two die, and if both say meal, the customer is cooked, and you may place two meals. So if I get two meals, I don't, then I would save my table. But because that did not happen, I've lost my meals, and I've lost uh, the, the table which is no good. It's going to be discarded. That could have got me seven points. Oh, well. Uh, and so that's kind of how these th this works here. This is going to get discarded now because it was utilized. And now we've got roller skates. Uh, he has a three here, but however, drunk minus two for your next roll. So when he gets to roll one, but I get to double the amount of meals. I got one meal, so I double that. And now I get two meals on my table. So now I go from one to three. Uh, this card's going to go now. He's going to make sure he gets up to his five cards once again. And get rid of this as well. And the next player is going to get a chance to go. What does he have now? Stops the better offer card immediately. Pretty useful. Thief, take one kitchen supply card from a player. I can play a kitchen supply on myself. Roll two, two extra die. So we'll go ahead and play this one here, uh, which will give me, which will prevent these cards from hitting me. And I will play a customer on my opponent. This says a player loses a turn and you may take over this player's table. So how to stop this? Roll two die, and if they're both meal, it stops. Well, <laughs> that did stop it. This is going to go. You're going to place two meals on the table, and he's then going to draw back up to his hand size of five. The next player will get a chance to go, but as you can see, he completed his meals on his table, so these are going to go. And this table is going to flip over and give him currency. At the beginning of your turn, you're going to get a new table, which will allow you to roll to gather more and more meals. And uh, they're going to give you more and more tips. And that's pretty much how the game goes. There's cards, of course, that stay in front of you. There are cards that play instantly. You've got additional chefs that you can utilize and cards that can hurt or help you, depending on who and what is, is being played on. And that is the idea of cooking customers. The first player to get to 20 points is the winner. If it's a tie for some reason, well, I don't think it'd ever be a tie. But whoever gets to 20 is going to be the first player to win the game Cooking Customers. And uh, that is how you play the game. All right, let's come up and talk about it. So that's how you play the game Cooking Customers. As you can see, it's a take that style game, but it also has a die element, which you're going to be rolling die based on the cards that are in front of you. Sometimes they're helpful, sometimes they're not. Super cooks are obviously better than others, but some cooks that are weaker, meaning they can only roll you two die, will have cards that are kind of attached to them or equipment that will prevent things from happening to them or to you as the player, which is a good thing. So you're going to be trying to always upgrade yourself, increasing the amount of things you have on the field, giving yourself bonuses, and of course, negating things your opponents do. The customer cards are are pretty pretty violent. They they're pretty <laughs> needs the bathroom cleaned after they did something. Oh, that's some that's some scary artwork there. Uh, so there's certain things that can happen based on what players play on you, but for the most part, the customers are pretty deadly. There's not a lot of caveats after the game. I think you pretty much get the idea of how it goes back and forth. Twenty points is the winner. Getting new tables and drawing cards up every turn. Uh, fired. Does firing happen? It does. It's very rare, but when it happens, it's detrimental to you. And pushing your luck by uh, rolling less die is going to be more likely to get your cook fired than, of course, rolling more die. There's more likely combinations, but the lesser cooks will give you some kind of bonus and whatnot. Always having cooks in your hand is important. If you don't have a cook, it's going to be hard for you to roll die in order to gain the meal tokens to place on the tables. If you don't have that, you're in trouble. For those of you who like Take That Games or Family Style Take That Games, you're going to enjoy this one. If those of you who like a little bit of die rolling added to those kind of games, you're definitely going to enjoy this game. For me, it's probably somewhere in the middle because I'm not super, like, good at playing Take That Games. I mean good by the fact that all the people on the table like to team up on me and smoosh me as best as possible. And so I'm always going like, oh, all the things I have are going away and they're not staying with me. So there's a lot of aggressive action that takes place in this game. That's also kind of part of the fun of it. It has a lot of humor on the cards indicating what the customers are doing and how they're affecting you positively or negatively. They also have the different cards that can be used as protective devices. You want to try and, you want to try and secure yourself more than you want to try and mess people over. But the 
the game forces you to be aggressive because you have to play another card another player if you if you want to play that secondary card and there's almost no reason not to play sometimes personally i'd rather play multiple good cards on myself but it doesn't really let you do that and that could be a negative or a positive because a, it does let you play the game with players. You feel like you're interacting with people because you're kind of forced into it. But B, you're not really able to kind of manipulate your board as much as you may want to based on the cards that are allocated in your hand. So you have to make choices. What card is going to be better to place down? Obviously, I need a cook, so I'm not going to get this card that doubles meals this turn. I'll have to save it for next turn, provided it's still in my hand. Oh no, I just lost my cook. I don't have a cook in my hand because I've been saving all my good cards, and now I have to get rid of some of these good cards to find a new cook from the deck. All these things take place in this game because it is a aggressive take that style game. Now, if you like that style game, you're going to definitely enjoy this game. The artwork is hilarious. I love the artwork in this game. It's got some really funny pictures. It's got the super cook who looks like Superman basically laser beaming the beef, making it turn into a... Uh, well done styled uh, steak. <laughs> and the tables are also interesting too because you're going to have weaker tables that will give you less money. You have bigger tables that will give you more. And of course, when you're at 19 and you need only one more point, it's going to kind of allow people to have a catch up mechanic because a table with eight or maybe with nine will give you more money. But maybe somebody else that's a little behind you that needs four or five can still win the game, which is a nice little touch and take that games as well. You never really know who's going to win until it comes down to the very end of it. There is a little bit of possibility of snowballing, but it's it's not as much as normal take that games have. Overall, game solid. I enjoyed it. I think you guys are probably going to enjoy it as well if you like the take that style theme. Uh, those of you who are interested in families and that kind of stuff, a family, if those of you who have a family and are interested in these type of games, it's a solid buy for you as well. If you're looking for more something strategic, a little less luck based, because there's a lot of card drawing in this game, there's a lot of die rolling in this game, you're never going to be able to fully protect yourself from what may occur, whether it be by your opponents or that simply be by blind luck rolling all those fires over and over again is definitely going to irritate you if it happens which is not completely likely i think i've gotten one or two cooks fired in the three games i've played so you know don't be too worried about the aggressive nature of the game itself just the other players messing you up in cooking customers all right outro. Alright guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. If you like this video, go check out those of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that little notification bell at the top too. It'll inform you of when we make more videos, which I'm sure you want to watch. No, you want to watch. Push the button. Or, or, or don't. Whatever. It's, it's, fine. it's fine. Also, go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com, blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter, listen more. If nothing else, you can enter to win the game, Dogs. We're currently giving that away right now. Uh, it's really fun little uh, worker placement tableau management. It's a tableau management game, which you're gonna go around a board collecting dogs. And it has some interesting applications to it as well, like Mess Games. And our friends, everythingboardgames.com, the giveaway geek, and Ferdinand, the cardboard stacker. Also, don't forget to check out our friends at Show Me How to Win. They'll be creating their next season, so you should go ahead and watch their old season if you haven't seen it yet. Jackie does some great work along with her Meeple ladies. Really, really fun walkthrough videos. I uh, support all these guys entirely. They do great work, even more than probably me and my own site. Now, maybe not the video portion, because I'm a master. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. And as always, I look forward to listening to the people in the background laugh at me making a fool of myself in Cooking Customers. understand why they won't push the notification bell. I just, I just want them to like me. I just want them to like me. <laughs>